Well, good afternoon, tubers and tubettes. It's the old dog here. And I have my special guest with me today. I would like to introduce you to the Filipina P. <laughs> well, hey, Paul. Thank you so much for inviting me over. And finally, guys, I made it into Paul's casting couch. <laughs> Should I call you Mr. Weinstein now? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. You are the Filipina P. Mm -hmm. What's it like going through life with a first name like the? The means the only one. Oh. So I'm claiming it. <laughs> <laughs> now, for the sake of this conversation, mm -hmm. is there any other name that I should call you by? Mm, P is fine because, P? yeah, everyone calls me P. Okay, okay. It's a deal. Mm -hmm. So, recently you started a YouTube channel. Yeah. How old is your channel? About 12 days old, I think. 12 days old. Yeah. And you've already got over a thousand subscribers. Yep, I'm so amazed and thank you all guys to um, for the support, especially to Rike and Gio and now Mr. Weinstein here. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called out. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Um, in the last four days, mm -hmm. you've been with Rike. Yep. You've been with Chio. Mm -hmm. And now you're with me. Oh, yeah. And you did a video called Am I a Slut? Uh, yeah. Well, I think we got the answer. <laughs> Three guys in four days. <laughs> you got me there, Paul. Weinstein. Weinstein. Mr. Weinstein. Okay, the. <laughs> um, so, talking about sluts, mm -hmm. what's the difference? Tell me the difference between being a slut and being slutty. I mean, is slutty, is it, is it the way you dress? Is it an attitude? Mm -hmm. Is it something you'd want to put on your resume? I mean, well, explain slutty. Well, that's the thing. When you define slut, yeah. there's a fine line and it's very subjective. And there's a lot of um, definition for every people, uh, for each and other, I mean, each and every one of us that uses the term slut. For me, there are there are two kinds that you can um, use. ask me about what is a slut or a sluttish or something like that. Well, slutty. I mean, you slutty. know, oh, slutty. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, some girls, I guess we, we have to define what a slut is. Yeah, that's the thing. What is a slut? And isn't that everybody's own definition? Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. It? Well, there's a fine line. It's, up, um, it's how you actually carry yourself because as other people said it's maybe the way you dress or the way you talk or the way you you know uh, you carry yourself around people but there could be could there not be women that maybe present themselves as being quote unquote loose and easy but mm. really aren't yeah they kind of um, like they're being misunderstood somehow okay so um, it depends on actually how would they um, I don't know, carry themselves because there are some slutty, like other people might say, um, if you work in a certain, like an entertainment industry yeah, and the way you dress yourself, it hasn't to be, it, it doesn't mean to say you have to show some skin to be actually called slut. Sometimes you just be the way you talk or the way you walk. Uh huh. So there's, that's the thing guys. What is a slut? Okay. Well, I thought that was, you know what? I, I loved it when I saw that video. <laughs> I, because I love the title and mm -hmm. I love the way that you just kind of went outside the box mm -hmm. on that whole thing. And I think that, you know, I, I, I didn't get a chance to see your entire interview with Gio mm -hmm. because my internet crashed. Oh. If you remember, I said hi to you guys. Yeah. And I was starting to watch you guys. And then my internet went down, as it's been doing all week, along with the brownouts. Yeah, same thing with mine. It's very, it's, it has been very spotty. So yeah. And so, um, where was I going with that? Um, oh, um, I forgot what I was going to talk to you about. Honest oh. to God. Slut. 
thing with Gio? I mean, the interview with Gio. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. interview with Gio. Mm -hmm. And I was watching you, and I, I, you guys were talking about your content. Mm -hmm. And I think your content is just going to be cutting edge. And, oh, I remember. So I, I messaged Gio, mm -hmm. and I said, I said, brother, I missed the interview. How did it go? And Gio told me, he said, she's going to be at 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> 100,000? 100, yes. I was just reaching 1,000. Yeah. No, no, I really believe that. I oh. really believe that. Oh. I agreed with him. I think mm. if you keep doing what it is that you're doing, you're just going to rock it to the moon. Okay? And, and having talked to you for 30 minutes or so before we did this, mm -hmm. you, uh, you deserve it because you're smart, you're funny, you're cute, you're all these sort of things. And the neat thing is that you've got such a great imagination <laughs> and you're not afraid to put yourself out there. So real quick, just tell them real fast the name of the channel. Uh, the name of my channel is The Filipina P. Uh, Filipina is spelled as F with the F, not with the PH, because some other guys spell right. it with the PH or Filipina, but it's the Filipina P, like the P in the peapod. <laughs> now, how did you come up with that name? Well, first thing, because everyone calls me P, and um, my family and friends call me P, and um, I thought, oh, Filipina P, that's it has a ring on it. It does. <laughs> and so your show is going to be pretty much geared for western guys yep and you're going to be able to give a intelligent i think uh sort of dialogue for these guys yeah that are either out here or thinking about coming out here or already have girlfriends yes and you can kind of give them the woman's perspective yes. of it mm -hmm. and give them the real deal yeah. not what maybe i think is going on because i'm a guy <laughs> okay? yeah we have a different perspective that's right that's right so you can give them the truth i mean i don't yeah. think any of us that are like like Ricky and Gio and myself. I don't think any of us lie, but, no. but we're we're giving our experiences and what we think. Yes. But that can only go so far. So yeah, I think it's best if you have the feminine yeah. aspect of it the, going out there to the guys. Yeah, the women's perspective, especially that I am a Filipina. I understand Filipina because I myself I have experience. Uh, a lot of things that you guys are asking about how you would, how would you deal with your Filipina girlfriend if they do the tampo thing and mm -hmm. um, what do they actually mean when they say something? Right, right. So right. yeah, um, offering a, I'm offering a first-hand advice from a Filipina's perspective, uh -huh. and I hope it will be um, helpful for you guys to actually. Um, understand how is it like here not just about Filipinas but the whole country itself that's awesome our channels are polar opposites but I think that they're gonna complement one another uh, yeah I think all channels have their niche mm -hmm. now if anybody's watched my channel at all for any length of time I always make it a point to say that I'm trying not to give advice I don't yeah. give advice the way that I do it is I just say, this is me, this is what happened, this was the result, you guys draw your own conclusion. Because I don't feel like I'm qualified to give advice. Mm -hmm. You, on the other hand, are, because you were born and raised here, I assume you were. Right? Yes, I am born and, and raised here. Okay, in the so you're born and you're raised here. And so you can give advice because you've been there, done that, and you've experienced it. Yes. So, um, I have a question that interests me. Okay. And I've had firsthand experience with it. And I thought it would be, I don't know if this topic's been approached or not on the other channels, because like I said, I missed some of them. Mm -hmm. But can you explain to the boys and girls out there in YouTube land about the coconut grapevine? Coconut grapevine? What the is chisma. that? The chisma. Oh, the chisma? The Chismis? Yeah, Chismis. Chismis. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I call it the coconut grapevine. Okay. Well, that is, as I think I have mentioned that it's almost, it can be considered as a national sport of Filipinos <laughs> because... <laughs> I don't know. It's it's always been um, <laughs> it's always been a question for especially for foreigners that doesn't. You guys are very. Um, you just own, mind your own business. You guys yeah. don't actually sometimes know your neighbors because you you guys are always on the go, like doing this, doing that. Right. But we, in the other hand, I'm not saying the Filipinos that 
you know they are they are lazy or whatsoever i'm not saying that there are filipinos that are especially housewives that housewives that are just staying at home and if they if their partners their husbands are out working somehow it it is their pastime it's a, it's actually a form of socialization but in a way it can be dangerous or it can be um, destructive to other people because it they oh do you know that what happened to that um, guy next door and stuff like that i think it's a um a human nature to feast on the misfortune of other people like they they like to talk about bad news for some reason even in the news you would see you know you would see that um uh when a news um it's a news uh what do you call it? it's a big news it has to be bloody it has to be this a big bang sensationalized but, yes so yeah it, and it's gossip guys. gossip yeah it's gossip the chismis is gossip it's a trip uh, can i relate a real quick story to you mm -hmm. when i was first moved out here after six months <clears throat> i was renting a uh, a scooter mm -hmm. and i had a girlfriend yeah who's come and gone since then and we decided that it was time to go down and go look at some gay scooters so we went down and we picked out um, our little Kimco and we sat in the Kimco dealer and I said okay listen I'm gonna go take I said when do I take the tr scooter home they said well right now I said awesome so we paid for the for the scooter and I said to my girlfriend at the time, I said, I'm gonna just run down to the scooter place mm -hmm. and return the rental. Right. And then I'm gonna take a trike and I'm gonna come back mm -hmm. and then we'll take our new little scooter home. And okay. she said, Great. On my way and it was it was seven or eight minute ride to the to the place on okay. the scooter and about a fifteen minute ride because it's a trike on the way back. My girlfriend got a phone call from two different girls as I drove the scooter back to the rental place. Okay. That, hey, I just saw Paul. Do you know what? He's alone. Are you okay? Is everything all right? Are you guys okay? <laughs> and she got one more text as I came back on the trike. Okay, that is... Six months ago, approximately, mm -hmm. May wasn't feeling good. We were supposed to go out with some people, and she said, baby, you go. I just want to stay home. Okay. I don't feel good. I said, okay. So we went out. I went out, I'm sorry, with my friends, and we went here, and we went there, and, and then we went there, and then I went home. And when I came home the next day, um, she said, so how did you like it over at Bogart's? <laughs> oh, the famous Bogart's. <laughs> and how did you like it over at Gigi's? And what was going on at the Why Not? <laughs> <laughs> and I had opened my mouth. <laughs> okay. She had all the information already on her oh, phone. Oh, yeah. Like and so that's what we foreigners, I, maybe I sprang that on you unfairly, the coconut grapevine. That's uh, what we call it. Like a telegraph wire is going across all the telegraph. There's a lot of storks um, flying, except it's not dropping babies. It's <laughs> dropping chismis. <laughs> so, uh, uh, your turn. You got a question. You got a statement. You got you got something you want to tell the kids? Yeah, uh, uh, I just want to add about um, about the chismis. Yeah. Because here, if you live in a small town, everybody knows everybody. So um, they're kind of they're kind of always um, intrigued or you're, they're interested in what's going on in your life. And as you said, you were just riding a motorbike alone, and they were thinking like something's wrong. So that, basically they're watching you every step of the way yeah 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 yeah, yeah you don't need cctv cameras no there's a lot all. of human cctv cameras here man oh man oh man so um which what do you got planned for the future on your channel you you have like some sort of a direction that you're taking it do you have any any anything in the works that you want to share is that all undercover oh no i i also shared my my views are my my plans for my channel uh, during Geo's Sorry. interview. <laughs> yeah, come on, come on. We should have watched. It. <laughs> I told my subscribers that um, I expect the unexpected because I'll be dealing, uh, I'll be touching other um, segments that'll be 
entertaining and funny at the same time. Okay. So I'll be branching out, going outside as well and doing the interviews. So it'll be more, um, there's a variety, not just um, staying at home with my my uh, different color backdrop. <laughs> so yeah, I was just waiting for my, uh, yeah, I was still looking for camera because, you know, as you know, if you're just filming with your phone without a camera, it's not gonna. You're in the big studio. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be an announcement, by the way, later today, so stay tuned. Wow, that's exciting. So what motivated you to start a YouTube channel? Oh, actually, it's, um, I've been thinking about this two years now. I've been thinking a lot of um, content to write. And uh -huh. um, I have friends, foreign friends and Filipinos that are, um, I was thinking when they were saying something that I think I have the best answer for that and I wanted I want to share those um, answers with you guys and especially I thought about uh, tailoring my channel towards expats to actually know what's going on here if they're just planning if they're still out there and then thinking about Philippines at least I'm giving um, the scoop okay so yeah <laughs> So let me ask you this, where would, where would you picture yourself or where would you want to be, say, five years from now? Oh my God, five years from now, I hope I'm still with you guys doing what I love to do, um, producing videos and yeah, I think I, I, I perceive myself to be a bigger channel, I hope. <laughs> yeah. And uh, still uh, continuing in, uh, to continue to produce um, informative and entertaining content for you guys well do you think that this might i mean do you have any bigger plans like not that like this a, is a big but do you think see this maybe as a stepping stone to get into broadcasting or tv oh, or bro. acting <laughs> or on the news or anything like that i know you wouldn't believe me if i say i'm a camera shy <laughs> no right, i, I was <laughs> Uh, I was a liar. <laughs> Oops, I could never tell a lie. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I was broadcasting maybe <laughs> outside. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, really, <laughs> no aspirations to like go on station TV. This is a stepping stone or anything mm, else? Nothing really. No. no. Okay. So in five years, um, you want to have you still want to be doing YouTube now mm -hmm. is YouTube for you is it gonna is it a financial vehicle is it just a, something that you've got a passion for um, where would you categorize it initially I thought about YouTube as sharing my views and opinions and um, wasn't really uh, well it's nice to be monetized of course but yeah. um, just to cover the expenses and stuff but my main goal was to actually produce first-hand um, information from a Filipinas perspective that the guys out there are asking plus um, I think it would help as well the Filipinos out there to understand foreigners at the same time to understand why they say things like that and they act the way they do it's not just they're not being com Planning foreigners actually okay. <laughs> because they yeah I just wanted yeah I just wanted to be uh, an informative and interactive channel as well okay. so yeah so I'm not putting words in your mouth I hope but if I'm hearing you right what I think mm -hmm. is that you watched a lot of stuff going on on YouTube yep and you said to yourself no that's not really the way it is let me correct that or let me I can I think I not that you're better than anybody but you know I, I, I can do that better I think I can communicate that more effectively is that kind of what you were thinking yeah I'm not saying I am um, I have a degree of you know I'm an expert of what I'm saying I'm not saying that I am just believe what I say mm -hmm. I am giving my honest opinion and it's up to you guys to take my advice or my views uh -huh. I just want to share it with all of you and I think it would help a lot to bridge the gap between Filipinos and the expats okay yeah all right cool um, so you talk about relationships mm -hmm. right yeah 
And so I don't want to get into your personal life whatsoever because that's your life. And I Thank think you. especially, no, no, really. A lot of times when I, when I interview uh, females, I say, you know, what's your name? Uh, how old are you? Are you single? Are you this or are you that? But we're on a different plane of thought here with you. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to respect your space and your boundaries for one thing. Um, but for the viewers out there, um, I would like to pose a question, and I'm not going to box you in with like one, two, or three. Okay. But if if you were looking, if you were single, okay, and right now today, and you were in the mood to to put yourself out on the market, if you will, okay, what would be some of the top qualities that you would look for in a guy? Okay. Is that a fair question? Yeah, of course. Okay. Because um, I think they would like to know. Yeah, because um, as I said, uh, maybe uh, some Filipinas have the same views as me. I'm, I'm sure because um, I'm a Filipina. So uh, I think there are similarities with the girls here that I'm looking for. So this is kind of a... So this just, you think is a fairly broad yes, answer? Okay, yes. Okay, cool. Well, for me personally, in my opinion, if I'm available in the market and I'm looking for a mate or a partner, so, um, I would look for someone who is mature enough to handle relationship. I think everyone does. And so you're looking for maturity. Maturity and um, yeah, that can handle relationship the way I want it to be, like in a 50-50 uh, relationship. Can you explain 50-50? What does that mean? Uh, for me, a 50-50 relationship is that you, I compliment him, he compliment me, he mm -hmm. respect my views, and I listen to his views as well. And um, if there are some arguments, lay it on the table and let's talk about it, not resorting to you know, lying and stuff like that. Because my number one rule is um, be honest. Okay. So you're looking for someone that's mature. Mm -hmm. what, what else? What other qualities are you and other Filipinas obviously looking for? What do you think are in the top three, if you will? <laughs> uh, I'm not looking for a Brad Pitt type or something like that. Not Filip uh, I mean, I can say that most Filipinas are not looking for. We don't just. I, I know I have mentioned about the qualifications. We are not really centering the physical appearance. Mm -hmm. It's about the chemistry. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are certain um, physical appearance that attract to us. Um, for me personally, I like a guy who is um, mature. I'm not going to put a number on it, but no. I, I would say um, older than me. Okay. Older than me. That's a fair answer. Yep. And um, has a sense of humor. <laughs> Okay. Because I'm kind of quirky too. Yeah. Like you. Yeah, that's my number one. <laughs> and actually someone that, um, oh yeah, people might be asking me about security because you always talk about that in your, um, in my videos about, you know, security. Of course, I'll be honest, someone who's secured. I'm not saying I'm looking for a Bill Gates or something. No. Right. Someone that smart in handling financials. Okay. Because yeah it will transpire into the long run and i want someone that has the same views as me when it comes to that department because that's uh i think a big uh it's a department that you should be considering if you're planning especially for a long-term plan with uh someone so so if i'm hearing you right mm -hmm. i don't think you're looking for necessarily the richest guy on the block no but you're looking for a guy that's responsible with responsible money. yes in other words a guy that isn't afraid to wake up in the morning and brush his teeth and shave and put on his tie if that's required and show up at work even when he doesn't feel like it as opposed to the guy that says to hell with it and goes out back and gets drunk yeah is that kind of right yeah you know a responsible one yeah yeah and i guess it doesn't have to be a lot of money, but you want looking. And again, I'm not putting words in your yeah. mouth, but I'm telling you what I'm hearing is it doesn't have to necessarily be a lot of money. No. But it should be something where the money is properly managed. Yes. And managed by both of you to some degree. Is yes. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, even though he brings it home and you're the housewife, uh, obviously you should have some say so in the matter. Yes. But do you feel that, because I know you're raised here, and that's a lot of differences between Filipinas and where I'm from, America. Mm -hmm. Do you 
believe in the man being the leader of the house or do you think there's no such thing or where is your where's your stance on that well as i said a 50 50 um in split. other words well let me let me rephrase it okay if if there's a tough decision that's got to get made okay in my opinion i think it's easier on the woman if the man makes that tough decision because tough decisions are not fun no but not necessarily okay. because as i said if you're in a relationship every side counts you you have to talk about like the pros and cons especially if it's an ugly decision uh -huh. um because i don't some people might say like oh you did that big decision because you're a man because you can handle that well okay um woman's perspective or the input of your partner is also important and okay. you have to come up with the um, necessary solution okay. together so at least you can say we did it together I, I think we have to when you're in a relationship you have to say like yeah we did it together and you know the, the good the ugly the bad so yeah okay now do you think that most Filipinas feel the same way as you uh, because here's here's what we hear out here well, how are we mm -hmm. doing on time can you see the timer on there uh, 26 oh my god we're gonna run out of time oh boy okay because my phone doesn't have much storage so if we just go off without saying goodbye we'll say goodbye right now yeah okay, <laughs> thank you so you. much thanks for watching but we're gonna keep talking <laughs> okay so um, where was I going oh up to you mm. that's the phrase that drives all of us crazy up to have you, you oh my god yeah it makes me nuts yeah okay. <laughs> guys if you don't know about it you'll you'll look at oh I should say not you I will look at me doesn't do it that much but other women that I have dated or known or see or still affiliate myself with I'll say so what do you want to do and they say up to you that's I, why I know I, I, I go back to the man being the leader or mm -hmm. where it can be misconstrued that I'm the boss. You got know. You know where I'm coming from? Yes, I know. I want you I know. to get inside my head a little bit, okay? And that's why I come back to the to the tough decisions yes. because I've been programmed in the three years that when I say, hey, what should we do about this? There isn't up that much you. communication. It's up to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you, Paul. Yeah. You suffer. So can you expand on that a little bit yeah. for us poor it's uh <laughs> yeah i know i admit that just even when you start dating someone when you take out uh take them out for a coffee or a restaurant they always say what do you want you would say what do you want to order oh it's up to you whatever it's i think it's a filipino thing okay it's not i'm not saying that they are very um, yeah follow the leader they're just being polite they don't want to be of course for us especially for frugal uh filipinas that doesn't want you to spend a lot of money in you know going out because we if actually a filipina cares about you they're not going to ask you to take them into a fancy restaurant gotcha. that's one yeah, that's gotcha. one um you know kind of kind of process that a little bit especially with may since we've mm -hmm. been together for so long and when i say something like that and she says up to you mm -hmm. i reread that now and I reread it to it doesn't matter as long as we do it together. Yes. It's what I'm hearing from May. And then my little little shtick on the tampo deal. And I'll just give some personal input from a guy. How's okay. that? Okay. All right. So this is what I've learned about tampo. Tampo is when a girl goes into reclusion, I guess would be a word. <laughs> you know, it's just kind silent of, mode. Silent mode. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> she's run silent, run deep like a submarine. <laughs> anyway, so what I've learned is this, is with May, is is, is she doesn't experience a lot of that. Um, so You're a lucky guy. I am. I am. But this is what I have learned. And and, and you tell me if, 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 if I'm right or if I'm wrong. I can take it. She'll usually, if, if I say something that, she, that pisses her off, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know an easy way to say it. Sometimes she'll just go and she'll just like be quiet for like 10 or 15 minutes. To decompress. She'll get over it. She comes out and gives me a hug and and we just both dismiss it. And we move on with our day. Okay. There has been maybe one, twice in the year and two or three months that we've been together 
where she has gone in and curled up for about seven or eight hours ok and so what i learned from this tampa deal was that what i did what i said what i what i uh... uh... what i did cut her very deeply at a very very deep level mm -hmm. and sincerely hurt her and i was able to educate myself that i can never ever do that again now the ten minute thing i can get away with <laughs> <laughs> That's still on the table. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Ten minutes. Yeah. All fine. right. I'm afraid we're about out of time. So uh, I just want to thank you for coming over. It's been a super pleasure meeting you. My and pleasure. And I'm sorry that you know I'm old and I keep losing my train of thought, but it happens in every video. <laughs> No, I enjoyed our talk. I hope it it is informative for you guys. I hope and so. And yeah, they've been pressuring you to have me here, so I'm in the casting couch, guys. So what's next, Jimmy Fallon? Yes. <laughs> Game. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. You please have the last word. Uh, yep. Uh, again, thank you for inviting me over, and thank you so much, guys. Uh, for all the support and all the subscribers that um, that went into my channel and check out my channel, watch my video. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I'll see you soon. Very soon. All right, good. And maybe we can do this again sometime. Oh, yes, please. All right. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching.